oil burning on your car can get very expensive. Oftentimes you will have to replace parts or potentially tear down motors to fix the problem. In this video, I'm gonna explain why I think this is happening, attempt to fix it on a budget, and tear down this engine to see why it's burning oil. Oil burning is becoming more common across all models of cars. This isn't just the European models that we specialize in, but it's peppered across most current makes and models. But as we become more technologically advanced, how are engines getting worse? As an engine is running, there is a piston moving up and down in each cylinder. Each piston has three rings. The top two are compression rings to make sure the cylinder is sealed, so when the air fuel mixture ignites from the spark plug, it pushes the piston down and everything stays sealed within the cylinder. The third piston ring is known as the oil control ring. This scrapes the oil off the cylinder walls while the piston is moving up and down to ensure you don't have too much oil inside the combustion chamber, which will cause that oil to burn. Since the piston rings represent roughly 20% of the mechanical friction within an engine, some fancy folks over at MIT decided it would be a super neat idea to remove as much tension as possible to reduce the friction of those rings. Low tension friction rings apply less pressure outwards on the cylinder wall, which makes an engine more fuel efficient. From what I can tell, this seems to have become more prevalent sometime in the late 2000s and carries through to today in the modern engines coming out right now. Am I blaming engineers who came up with low tension rings for this issue? Am I suggesting that we take them, all of their loved ones, their pet lizard, to the gulag? No, absolutely not. Welcome to the gulag. This situation is another case of engineers and theories working out great where low tension rings aren't gonna cause additional oil burning, but in practical reality and the combination of people not maintaining their car properly, it actually has a massive impact on all real world applications. The main issue around low tension rings seems to be related to carbon buildup, especially on the oil control ring. Once the oil control ring is filled up with carbon, it can no longer properly do its job, allowing more than intended oil into the combustion chamber. To be clear, before you go down the road of assuming you have a piston ring issue, you should eliminate parts like the PCV valve, your valve guide seals. If you have a boosted application, anything related to your turbo, these are items you wanna make sure you address before you jump to the conclusion that you have a piston issue. So I know you're thinking, how can I prevent this on my car? First thing you can do is regularly maintain your car with premium quality oil. Many years ago, manufacturers went from 3,000 to 5,000 to 10,000, and sometimes even higher oil change intervals. Couple that with the fact that people have busy lives and oftentimes forget change in their oil because it's not a major priority. That is a big part of why this is a thing. On some engines, proper maintenance may not even be enough to avoid this. Now, you made it to this video probably because your engine is burning oil and you're trying to figure out what to do about it. Normally the only way to fix this issue would be to rebuild the engine, and that sometimes includes updating parts like pistons. A rebuild like that in the VW and Audi world that we're more familiar with is going to be somewhere in the seven to $8,000 range. Since that's extremely expensive and a very tough pill to swallow, we're gonna see if we can fix this thing on a budget. For context, this Passat 1.8T is burning oil at an alarming rate. The acceptable oil consumption for Volkswagen and Audi, and I think actually most manufacturers, Toyota I know included, is one liter every 1,200 miles, which is a lot of oil. Just to put that in perspective, if a normal car has an oil change interval of 10,000 miles, that would mean you're putting in nine liters of oil from a in between oil changes, which means on most cars, you've actually fully changed your oil before you reach your oil change. And that's in spec? That's, in, that's, that's within spec. When this car rolled into the shop, it was setting the oil light at 430 miles driven. That is full dipstick, then the engine burned through so much oil that the oil was so low, it set the oil light which is about two and a half liters of oil. This car was burning one liter of oil every 172 miles driven. Wow, that's alarming. Now we're performing the BG service on that car and then test the real world results after the fact. The first step in this process is to drain the oil from the car and then we're gonna install this dynamic engine cleaner. And filter number one. We're gonna install this 44K into the tank. This is for a fuel system cleaner. This is actually pretty good stuff. So first thing we're doing with the dynamic engine cleaner is running this in. Now we're filling this thing up to where the oil level would be. And as you can see, it's fairly thin. Then we're gonna run the engine for 45 minutes at 3000 RPM. Also important thing to note, 
we are gonna be using a scan tool to monitor oil pressure. Primarily, this product would often be used for people who are using it to desludge an engine. If you were to be desludging an engine, you might knock something loose, which would then allow it to go in the oil pump pickup and they're afraid it's gonna clog something up. So you want, need to be constantly monitoring oil pressure to make sure that it doesn't super run dry on oil and then lock up your engines. We're gonna be using a scan tool though, because we have the technology. If not, you'd have to hook up an actual manual oil pressure gauge. Look at that smooth pour. Because one of the claims is that this could possibly raise compression and we think we have a ring issue, we're gonna do a compression test. So here's our compression tester hooked up in cylinder one. Let's check what we got. Cylinder one, 150. Cylinder two, 160. Cylinder three, 160, cylinder three. Cylinder four, 120. Cylinder four, need some help. But in theory, this should raise our compression on and make them even across all the cylinders. Now we're gonna start this up. We have this, which is a pedal depressor to hold down the gas pedal at 3,000 RPM. 3,000 RPMs? Yes. 45 minutes. Yeah. It's not gonna clean your pistons quickly because it's gonna take time. It's gonna have to keep going up and down that cylinder and wash that stuff out of there. There are probably people who are concerned that this is gonna blow the engine up. I mean, I'm not not concerned. I mean, it's a lot of RPM. Now we just gotta wait 45 minutes. <laughs> Piece of cake. A few moments later. All right, and we're done. Let's shut her down. Now oil filter out. Everything's a little bit hot. Ow. Ugh, it stinks. It does smell. This thing's been running for 45 minutes. It's gonna be scalding hot. Steamy. As you can see, the color of this is very different than the way it went in. It went in a pretty clear, maybe slightly yellow hue to it, and now it's pretty solidly dirty. And in just a short 45 minutes, at 3,000 revolutions per minute, I'm just a guy. Do we have to waste another oil filter? Or can we just put that one back? No, we have to waste another oil filter. Okay. Is it a waste if you're filtering out a lot of contaminants? <laughs> it has a kind of a, a brownness on the inside. Eh, you can't really see it. Oil filter part du. Boop. You know how clean this thing's gonna be afterwards? So clean. We'll put some screenshots of some people who have done a sludge engine and before and after. As you can see, the color is actually pretty much the same on this one. The other one was more or less the same color as well. It's pretty clear. Let's do it, round two. What you hear right now is our exhaust hose running. This thing might smoke a little bit on you while you're doing this, so just keep in mind that that's gonna be normal. Back at 3000 RPM, this time for 20 minutes. Eventually. Let's go get some more scalding hot oil on us. The reason why there are time limits to these items is because it would be a problem if you left them for a while. Oh wow, this one's like mushier. Oh wow. Mm. It like- It rinsed the oil filter. No, it didn't rinse it. It like broke it. <laughs> oh God. It's a, that's a powerful odor. That is a very powerful odor. Oh Look my at, gosh. that's why you don't leave this in your engine. See what it did to the oil filter? It smells quite bad. <laughs> It's really unpleasant. Ouch. It's pretty similar. It's not, it's, it's much cleaner than the last one. This is what it looks like after a night of binge drinking beers. <laughs> probably prefer to drain this more than I would probably on a normal oil change, just to try to get as much of this out as possible. That shiny new filter. <laughs> filter number three. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm pouring like this, like a dope. High quality H2O in there. So this is MOA. This is an oil treatment stuff. This is actually not specific to this service. This is a very common BG product that anybody who's been familiar with them for a while would know. This goes in your oil. So we're gonna dump that in now. Yeah, this is not something that you drain out afterwards. This is something you, you dump in kind of in between oil changes. Some people do it like every other, that type of stuff. You know, we sell a couple liquid molly products that are similar. All right, so we have our dipstick here. We're at the top of the checks here and we're gonna do our oil consumption test again. 
So what that means is this car is going to be sent off. We know our oil level. We're gonna drive it a thousand miles. Let's check our oil level, see what our consumption is before. Again, we had pretty significant oil consumption. It was burning over a quart every 500 miles. So now we'll see how much improvement, if any, that we have here. Let's check our compression. Cylinder one. Those went up about five PSI. Cylinder two. 150. I don't remember. I don't remember if that's a change or not. So. I don't think so. Cylinder three. One, yeah, 150. Uh, Cause that one I think was higher before. Possible that we might need to like let this engine run for a while. Any of them are gonna like see an improvement. This is the one that needed it. Cause it was at 120. Well, that went up quite a bit. Cause that one was at 120 before. Cylinder four compression went from no bueno to much more bueno. After performing the service in this car, we set the oil level to the top, reset the trip, and then drove the car for an extended period of time. The first mileage test after the service went 922 miles before setting the light again. This makes the oil consumption almost cut in half completely at 368 miles per liter of oil. Then without changing anything again, we just continued to drive the vehicle, reset the trip again, set the oil level again, continued that test, and it jumped to 1100 miles before setting the light which is 440 miles per liter. The dynamic engine cleaner from BG is something that you can't purchase on your own. This is a product that they only sell within their official distributors and shops that actually do the services themselves. I know at home, you wanna know if you can test this yourself because this is a really expensive product, plus you gotta pay for labor. So we're gonna take a look real quickly at the Liquamali options, which are way cheaper and something that could be a good option you could buy on your own. Now, because I don't have another car burning oil, I'm not gonna be able to give you real world results of if this is going to fix a major oil burning issue, but we are going to do a compression test before and after to see if there's any impact on this car that already isn't burning oil, so it's not going to have the same type of impact that I would have expected something like this to have on a car that was burning oil. If you need this product or services for your vehicle, we have two repair shops and we also have a site where you can purchase this stuff, shopdap.com. And we even have a full kit for updated pistons on Audi models if you wanted to buy one of those kits if you're brave enough to do that rebuild on your own, which we will link to both in the description below. Now we're gonna check the compression before we do our liquid Molly engine flush. Cylinder one, 165. Cylinder two, 160. Cylinder three, 160. Cylinder four, 160. Now that we've done with our compression check, we can add this to our engine. Once we've dumped that entire can in there, that's for three to five liters of oil. That's obviously going to be relative to the motor size that you have. Now we're gonna let this engine run at idle for 10 to 15 minutes and then drain it out, change our oil in our filter. We are past 10 minutes now, we're gonna shut her down. We have run it now. It was a little ticky along the way. Uh, did make some noises here and there. We're gonna drain this oil out, check the condition, and see what we got. Actually doesn't smell that bad. How long has it been since your last oil change, Nathan? 5,000 miles. Oh, how about that? Thanks for the oil change. You're, <laughs> you're welcome. So the, we're at the appropriate amount of time since an oil change. Condition of the oil actually looks fine considering now that we're done draining, we're gonna plug this up and change our filter. Let's see, oh, it's not squishy like the other one. It does have an odor that's more than just oil, but not like quite like the other one was. New filter. Uh, fill her up. If your engine is burning oil, this Visco Plus should be something that you wanna do based on what Licomali has in their details for this oil burning process. And same deal as the other one, it actually is supposed to be mixed with three to five uh, liters of oil. So we're just gonna fill this guy up, check our oil. I don't know if I'd say that's a perfect fill, but it's pretty darn close. Yeah, that's what happens when you wear your tech jersey. That's what, oh yeah, that's when, when you LARP, you all of a sudden get better at filling oil. <laughs> Cylinder one, no change. Cylinder two, no change. Cylinder three, up five, imagine that. Cylinder four, up five. 
So does this engine flush work? It is something that clearly works based on the fact that it raised compression. Now this could have created some assistance in the raising of compression, which may have created a false positive. I would suggest for the cost of these, they're fairly inexpensive. These would be something I would give a shot absolutely if you do have an oil burning issue. These are obviously significantly more expensive. So you can try this on your own. If that does not help you, you can always have a shop do something like this. And if that doesn't help you enough to your liking, you can always move down the road of rebuilding your engine. This is a 1.8 T engine out of a 2014 Volkswagen Passat, and it's burning oil. This engine had 93,000 miles on it. That's not the right way to take that out, but they got, they replaced it with a used engine. I've had this for quite some time from a tech who works at a dealer nearby. His name is Chandler. He was kind enough to supply us with this engine. It was burning a lot of oil, especially on cylinder three, which means this engine might have more damage inside than most would be. And just so you know, because this is an old engine, I'm not really gonna be spending too much time trying to make all this stuff super nice because this engine's kind of junk. It is rebuildable though. So I mean, when I get down to tear down, I am gonna try to keep some of this stuff nice because I believe this could be an engine that we put pistons in and actually keep for someone we know or sell it or some, something like that. Things were a little tarnished, so they probably didn't change the oil a lot. Oh, shocker, people who own Passat with a base engine don't maintain their car real well. <laughs> oh man, this last triple square, I can't get in there. What would I do? I know, these ball-ended triple squares found at shopdap.com are perfect. They allow me to insert at an angle and break it loose. No problem. Caught it. <laughs> I totally lightened the impact of that. <laughs> uh, until now, I haven't noticed it, but as I've removed a few items, I've noticed that this thing is starting to stink. What that's an indication of is that this car has probably been poorly maintained. Not a shocker if it was burning oil. Usually, I wouldn't say if your car is burning oil that it's your fault, because that's victim blaming, but I will say it's probably your fault. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So this is cylinder three. Apparently it was so bad in terms of burning oil that it was fouling spark plugs. This uh, valve here on the intake side has way more carbon on it than the face of it than the other ones. So you can see there's not really much carbon on those. And this one has kind of a clear buildup there. Uh, when I look at it, nothing really stands out to me too much. No major wear in the cylinder. We are gonna flip the engine over so we can take the pistons out. But what that's gonna do is dump all the oil on the ground. Here's cylinder three on my right hand. On my left hand, we have cylinder two. Uh, I'm looking at them just to compare what if I can see a difference. First thing I noticed was the skirts here on the piston. This one shows, which is cylinder three, uh, has more wear than cylinder two. When we flip them over to the other side, same thing as cylinder three is slightly more worn on the skirt than cylinder two. I'm questioning whether the cylinder three really was a major difference in terms of concern. I don't see anything that stands out to me as majorly different between the two pistons. When I look, you can see between the second ring, there's clearly carbon above the, below the first ring and above the second ring, which means there's probably some blow by getting past, getting trapped there in the second ring. So clearly if there's carbon there, that that's uh, a sign that at least there's some concern for carbon building up there. The oil control rings, they're kind of filled up with carbon. They're not as filled up as I kind of expected them to be. They're not like completely packed, but they are pretty filled with carbon. When we look at these bearings on the bottom side here, there's nothing that really stands out to me as a major issue. So uh, nowhere cylinder, either cylinder, there's one slight line on cylinder two, but nothing really of note. Uh, it's not even a, actually something you can feel. There we go. Cylinder one, probably no different. Same skirt wear. This one actually has a little more skirt wear. Okay, so when I look at this, same problem as the last one. Carbon below the first ring, above the second ring. The updated pistons on this are probably to resolve this issue. And I wonder, we'll have to look at them and compare to see what the difference is. 
Here's our piston out of our 180. It's actually cylinder three, if you take a look there. I was comparing some differences on updated pistons. Now this piston is out of an Audi that has updated pistons as well. That's a two liter Audi engine that had major oil burning issues. We replaced this is a new Audi piston. This is the updated one. Now, one notable difference that I noticed on both the two liter Audi ones and 1.8T ones is they have this groove cut out right below the oil control ring. So if you look, the Audi piston has the exact same groove cut out. Now, the updated piston, one of the notable differences that I noticed is it does not have that same cutout. There's a slight notch there but it actually doesn't cut through into the actual ring groove where the oil control ring is. I wonder in this circumstance if this oil control ring and the ring groove being open there actually causes more oil burning and that's why they updated to this style without that groove. Purely speculating, but clearly these are changed parts. And more importantly, this 1.8T piston, I looked at the updated versions of this piston and the pictures I found look exactly like this Audi piston with that dome not notched out all the way like it is on this. So I'm gonna start with cylinder one just to pull these rings off. It's possible carbon in the ring grooves is part of the issue as well because there is a decent amount of carbon in the ring groove. As you can see there, if I scrape that piston, you can see how much carbon there is on there. I wouldn't scrape a piston that you're planning to put back in your engine like that, by the way, on the side. <laughs> Now, if you look at the tips, that the gap on this second ring is actually wider. See how the tips are, are in different spots? The tips actually don't land in the same spot. So I'm wondering bottom ring having additional ring gap is part of the reason why they burn oil. I don't know. I'm th two things I'm not. Uh, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I'm not even a technician, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All right, so we're here in the cylinder head. We're looking through the intake ports. Because I didn't see anything on that end, I was wondering if maybe this was a valve guide seal issue. So when you look down the cylinders, there you see the valves in there. You can see there's a valve, which is basically the shaft and then the circle at the bottom that opens and closes. The seal is up top. It goes on the inside of the cylinder heads. If there was oil leaking, you would tend to see more carbon on one cylinder over another. So, and what I'm seeing is kind of consistent build up here. So right now we're looking at cylinder two. You can see the kind of the cross hatch pattern. There are some rings of wear kind of at the top of the cylinder, but other than that, there's really not a ton of stuff that makes me think that there's a major issue here. Cylinder three, same deal. You can see kind of the cross hatch pattern. It does have a little bit of hazing to it. So I don't know if that's like a residue that kind of built up or whatever. There are some lines in there, but nothing seems like that's a crazy amount of scraping or anything. There are some marks from the piston skirt that you can see clearly worn on the cylinder wall and all the cylinders. To summarize our engine teardown findings, in the cylinder walls, there was no damage of note, no major wear issues that we saw within the cylinder. The places we did notice somewhere was on the piston skirts, as well as the carbon buildup that we found on the piston itself and in the oil control rings in the piston, which we suspect is the major cause of this issue to begin with. In addition to the fact that we have the updated piston issue, we know that this is probably going to be the cause, which is why there are updated pistons in the first place. There are services you can perform on your car that will have an impact on the oil consumption of your vehicle. These are not likely to fix the problem completely. They are likely to be something that can have an impact and would have an impact. The proper way to fix one of these cars, while it is insanely expensive and may be cost prohibitive, is going to be to properly rebuild the engine and sometimes including updated parts like pistons for VW and Audi models that have that problem. And I know Toyota has this problem and I'm sure there's a variety of other cars that have the exact same issue. I understand that using a product like this is going to be the choice that you're gonna go with first to prevent you from having to go with the expensive option of rebuilding the engine that may be cost prohibitive and maybe not tenable for your financial situation. I think many people are going to look at a service like this, especially inexpensive ones like this, and think running them back to back to back will be the solution for you to fix the problem if you run enough through and I can tell you this, it will likely get better if you did that. I would not suggest doing this over and over again. These are very harsh chemicals in all of these products and are not intended to be run through an engine over and over again. They could damage the internals of your engine if you did that. I think running more than one of these through over an extended period of time 
would be something that I would consider to improve the longevity and hopefully you get incremental gains along the way. If you have an engine that is known to have oil burning issues, something like this could be something that's used as a preventative over extended periods of time to ensure you don't have that issue and prevent carbon buildup over time along with proper maintenance and oil changes and using quality oil. If you have a VW or an Audi and you have a 1.8T engine that's known for burning oil or the two liter TSI found in the Audi models is known for burning oil and you have this issue, getting a used engine, if there are updated pistons for your engine, do not get a used engine. It will not solve your problem. You're likely to spend a lot of money on a used engine to end up with the exact same issue again. If you're gonna spend the money, get updated pistons, have the engine rebuilt properly, it's the only way you're going to guarantee this issue gets solved. Otherwise, don't spend the money on a used engine. It probably needs the same pistons. That's why they sell updated ones in the first place. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and maybe it helps you solve your oil burning issue. And again, purchases like this or any others help support videos just like this one. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.